Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Super Agents Live. I appreciate uh, you taking the time out, and, uh, and you know, I know your time is valuable. I appreciate you spending some of it with me. Now, listen, today's episode is awesome. You are going to love it. I bring on a serial entrepreneur. This guy has built more than 50 companies, more than $2 billion in revenue from his efforts, and what we talk about today is why you should go out and surround yourself with talent. He, we talk about how to manage your mindset. We talk about how to go out and find a mentor. We talk about building wealth through horizontal income. I really loved this interview and I know you will too. Uh, let's, before that, let's hear from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard, or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications' clients. And I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Okay, real quick, before we get to the show, housekeeping as always. If you don't know, the hashtag for this show is unpack that idea. Go ahead and tweet out using that hashtag, and I'll follow you, and I encourage everybody in our audience, you know, it's a big follow train. So, and look, people have gotten between 100 and 300 new followers. So, uh, you should have a presence on Twitter. Uh, use the hashtag. Really quick, we had, uh, I, I was going to do a live event here in San Diego uh, in June, June 19th. That is canceled, everybody. Sorry, man. Uh, it conflicted with something else my wife had set up. So, we actually are going to do it the third week of July. I'm actually... Um, uh, early July, uh, July 11th through 14, I'm going to be in Portland at the World Domination Summit. Um, I come back, uh, and then we'll throw this mastermind here, um, and then I have another one, actually, with today's guest, David Osborne, uh, and we're going to be going to his house up in Steamboat. So, uh, if you want to attend the event, look, it's, it's we're going to have 10 people there, maybe 12. It's going to be, you know, super it's going to be 150 bucks. We're going to rent a suite, a hotel suite, uh, you know, buy some food and just look, mastermind all day. Talk about your business. Talk about where you're stuck. And, uh, you know, everybody's going to be able to pitch in. And uh, hopefully it's going to be, a, you know, a, a really cool thing uh, that will move your business along. All right. Hey, let's get to the show. All of you should get your pen and paper out. Today's guest is a super interesting guy. He was raised in Europe, educated in Great Britain and started founding companies in the 90s. This guy has started more than 50 companies and has generated more than $2 billion in revenue. And some t- somehow, this guy still found time to write a book. It's called Wealth Can't Wait, and it's going to be out February 2015. I'm thrilled to welcome David Osborne. Hey, David, thanks for taking the time out today. Hi, Toby. Great to be with you. Hey, you know, it's funny, man. So, uh, so I wrote that intro for you, um, and as I was writing and I was reading about your story, I'm like, you know, David is kind of like this like mini Richard Branson. Wow, what a compliment that is. That's my uh, <laughs> business hero, Richard Branson, one of anyway, for sure. No. You know, uh, Richard is, Richard's an amazing guy, and, and he's a guy that I'm going to talk about a lot in the book. 
Go ahead. Awesome. No, no, I was just going to say, I don't know if it, has anybody ever told you that? No, I've not been told that. Um, I do believe that Richard is the sort of uh, patron saint of uh, serial entrepreneurs, if you will. He's the guy that represents those that want to have an amazing quality of life, live a life of adventure and daring, and also create businesses to fund that amazing lifestyle while making a difference in the world. So I have never heard that, and I'm honored to be even mentioned in the same breath as a guy like that. <laughs> nope. Hey, so look, so, you know, how you and I connected, it was funny. So, you know, I talked with top producers all across the nation. And it was just amazing. It was like sort of like in this period of a month, I, I kept hearing, you know, whether I was talking to Patrick Lilly or Pat Hyben, you know, they're like, hey, you remind me of my friend David Osborne. You know, and they're like, you got to meet David. So we, you know, you and I met about a month ago and we got to spend some time on the phone. Um, but so yep. I know a little bit about you, David, but take a minute, tell, tell everybody about yourself and, uh, and some of the things that you're working on, some of the things you're excited about today. Sure, I'd be happy to. I am a, a very, very lucky guy, and I'm lucky because I've been surrounded my whole life by really talented people. And uh, so my background is I'm the son of a Green Beret and the, the son of a, a, a mom who uh, was, was a housewife until she was about 45, got into real estate, became a top producer. And not only that, she, she joined a fast-growing company called Keller Williams. Uh, a lot of people, you know, have heroes. A lot of people have role models um, and a lot of people have moms. I'm just lucky enough to have uh, all three wrapped up into one person. My mom's my hero role model and my, and my mom. So it's pretty cool. She got into real estate and, you know, I was 14 years old and I never saw her again. That was it. She was working 14 hour days. She was gone. I always thought growing up that real estate was a business I would never get into. In fact, I thought it wasn't even a real business. Um, I thought it was just like something, you know, wives did while their husbands worked or husbands did while their wives had a real job. So I never thought I'd do it. Um, but I got into some jobs. I was a door to door sales guy, uh, for, uh, businesses for computers where I'd go into a skyscraper and I'd have to knock on the door of the top building and work my whole way through the building. Talk about a tough job, Toby. That was a tough job, but I loved it. And I learned so much from it. Uh, and it was just a great training ground for real estate. Then, after working there for a year and a half, I quit my job, sold all my possessions, and went hitchhiking around the world. And I did that for two years and three months, three years and a quarter, with my best friend from college. And we went all through Africa, India, Australia, New Zealand, South America, Europe, and uh, it was an awesome, epic adventure. We lived on 20 bucks a day, and we just had to kind of negotiate our way around the world. Sometimes we wouldn't be sure whether we wanted to go to Kenya or Uganda. And we'd flip a coin, and wherever the coin landed is the way we went. It was a great experience and a great journey. And I came back from that trip and literally had spent every dime I had and had run up my meager credit card. I had a credit card with like a $1,500 limit. I think I'd put $1,530 <laughs> on it. I had to call them to, I had to beg them to give me that extra 30 bucks so I could fly home. I got home and I was jobless. And it just so happened my mom's business was going well, and she said, Hey, why don't you come work for me? I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come work in real estate with you, but only while I look for a real job. Uh, and so I went to work for my mom and, and uh, a college friend of mine called me up to buy a house. I showed him around. We had a great time. And then I got a $5,000 commission and I thought, geez, this isn't such a bad career. And the rest is history. Here I am today, uh, 20, 21 years later, still loving the field of real estate and feeling lucky every day that I ended up in it. Amazing, man. Amazing story. Uh, and by the way, I think you and I are about the same age. How old are you, David? I'm actually 47, just turned about um, a month ago. You're a little bit older than me. I'm 44. Well, look, so one of the things you started with, right? So you had, you, 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 what you said earlier, David, you said, I'm lucky that I'm surrounded. I've always been surrounded by talented people. Um, how much of that, how much of being, you know, being in the right community, being around the right minds, you know, how important is that, David? You know, I, I'm glad you asked that, Toby, uh, because I think it's possibly the most valuable lesson you can get in life. And here's my favorite quote of the moment. Um, and, you know, I'm a learning-based individual. I'm constantly looking for new edges, new ways to learn, new ways to be better. And my favorite quote right now is that the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the expectations of your peer group. I'll say that again. Yep. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the expectations of your, of your peer group. 
So if your peers, the guys you hang out with, have a low expectation for life, have a low expectation for their business success, have a low expectation for themselves, how is your life going to look? And conversely, if they have a high expectation for success, a high expectation for health, and a high expectation for the quality of their lives, and they're willing to be your friend, guess what that does for you? So who you're around is almost uh, the most important thing in your life. Uh, if you took the closest 10 people to you and you averaged them out, that's pretty much what your life's going to look like. If, you're, if your nearest friends are uh, addicted to drugs and, and maybe drinking alcohol all the time and don't have any desire or passion for life, your life will look one way. If your closest friends are uh, Richard Branson, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett, it's almost certain that your life will look differently. So taking that to a more reasonable scale, you want to surround yourself by the best people you can, the best mentors, teachers, and coaches, the best peers, which I actually think is the most important piece, um, and the best students and mentees if you're one that likes to give back and reach out and coach people. I I 100% agree. You know, and one of my favorite quotes um, that I talk about on the show every now and again is Jim Rohn's, you know, you are the, the, the law of five or the, you know, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, <clears throat> you know, and, and there's so many people, you know, Zig has said things, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Um, <clears throat> I, I 100% agree with that. And I think, you know, for the most part, you know, what you said with your favorite quote is, you know, you talked about expectations, you know, and people have goals, people have vision, but <clears throat> goals and vision are different from expectation, right? You expect, sure. you know, you, what you expect of yourself is going to, uh, you know, bleed off into your friends. And, you know, so all boats rise in a, or how's that saying go, David? Uh, all in a rising tide, all boats rise. All boats rise. Yeah. My viewpoint is this. Um, if, if you're my friend, I expect you to have an amazing life. If you're my friend, I expect you to achieve the goals or move towards the goals you set for yourself. If you're my friend, my stand is for you to live a life of abundance, excellence in all areas, physical, mental, health, relationship. So if I'm around you and you're not living that, two thing, one of two things are going to happen. Either we're going to have conversations that's going to help you reach higher and move towards that, or we're going to stop hanging out. That's going to be your choice. And that doesn't mean everyone has to be perfect all the time. It means you have to be moving in that direction because the number one key to anything you want in life is a willingness. And if you have a willingness to grow, a willingness to learn, a willingness to improve and get better, get stronger, get smarter, get brighter, get more successful, if you have that willingness, that is all it takes. Everything else will follow from that willingness. And conversely, obviously, if you have no willingness, then uh, that's cool. Have a nice day someplace else. <laughs> right. Well, so look, so what if I'm willing, right? And, and I, you know, I want to, uh, I want to better my life. Um, how do we go out and find, you know, not everybody can hang out with a guy like you, right? I'm lucky to be able to spend, you know, 40 minutes on this call with you. And, and my audience is lucky that they, they're able to, you know, to peer into your life and the way you think, David. But you know, if, you know, there are people out there, they might live in a small town or they might live in a big town. You know, maybe they're in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, they're, they're just starting out in real estate. How do, how do they level up and, you know, and, and, and create a better peer group for themselves? Well, that's another great question. I mean, it's everywhere around you. There's a, there's a great saying, I think it's Gutha. He says, uh, when you, when you act boldly, strange forces will come to your aid. Uh, I'm in a tribe. My tribe's called GoBundance. You can check us out at www.gobundance.com, and that's G-O-B-U-N-D-A-N-C-E. We're a tribe of entrepreneurs, a tribe of people who want – we come together for three things. One is adventure vacations. We climb Kilimanjaro together. We go to Norway and climb mountains and sea kayak. Uh, we do adventure stuff all around the world. Uh, number two is we are accountability-based, so when we get together, we talk about our dreams, visions, goals, what's working, what's not working, how we could get better, and we learn from one another. And then number three, we stand for extreme fitness and extreme health and extreme quality of relationships. So what's cool about my tribe is when I get together with them, I don't have to pretend I'm something I'm not. I get to be all that I can possibly be. Sometimes, Toby, and I'm sure you experience this, when you've received a certain level of success, Sometimes take, people take it as if you're being arrogant or you're bragging or you're being aggressive when you're expressing your passion for life. And I respect that, and so I uh, just prefer to be around people where I don't have to hide. I can be all that I want to be and be awesome and be the best I can be and be around guys that are choosing that life also. Now, I have cousins and friends and relatives that sometimes I get with them, and 
and their life's a lot different than me. And we're, we're, we're blood, so we hang out, maybe at Thanksgiving and so forth. Uh, and when I'm with people that are still struggling and haven't really chosen a purpose in life and are in a business that they don't really like and going to work every day and not loving it, um, I just have to compress myself and almost not be fully who I am because I don't want to, you know, intimidate or make them feel uncomfortable. So you've got to be around a tribe where excellence is the norm, where being great is the norm. You see, there's a saying, eagles fly alone. And you know what? It's, it's completely baloney. Eagles don't fly alone. Eagles like to fly with other eagles. If you're an eagle, if you're making stuff happen and you're moving forward in life, you actually feel kind of lonely because you feel like you're, you're, you're in a different planet from folks that are sort of complaining and, and in depression or not making things happen. And when you get around other guys that are making things happen, it's liberating. All of a sudden, you can be around people and talk about your vision, your plan, your goals, your struggles, what's working, what's not, in a very outcome-focused, positive, forward-moving way. So if you're an individual uh, who's, who's in a small town or in a big city like L.A. and you don't have that group, you have to put that on your goals and your intentions to find an incredible group to mastermind with. And uh, if you want to look more into it, just Google Napoleon Hill under masterminding. Um, but way back in the day, Ford and uh, Carnegie and those guys, they used to mastermind. Today, it's no coincidence that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are great friends because as you get to le- achieve a certain level of success, you want to be around people that achieve similar levels of success. And here's something else. When you're around people that are making things happen, it makes it easier for you to make things happen because all of a sudden you look around and you go, hey, this is how it is. Whereas when you're around people that are struggling, guess what their language is? Their language is, this is so hard, I can't yeah. do that, yeah. my job is this, and that's not productive to living an amazing life. So surround yourself by great with great people, and if the five closest people to you don't add up to who you want to be, find a different five. It sounds harsh, but it really isn't. Look at it this way. I have a beautiful four-year-old daughter and a beautiful uh, 26-year-old daughter as well. I have two beautiful daughters. Imagine if your kid was hanging out with somebody who was a bad influence or had five lousy influences around him. What would you do? I don't know about you. I'd probably pull my kid out of school and put her in a different school to get her away from bad influences. Yeah. So why aren't we so vigilant in our own lives, Toby? That's my question, and we should be. No, I, I totally agree. And look, and that is, you know, I think what people don't, to, to, play, to, to build on that a little bit, right? Uh, Bill Gates is great friends with Warren Buffett. You know, if you go back in history, famous writers, you know, they all hung out together. Um, you know, there is, I forget the, 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 the stream of it, but, uh, you know, Aristotle was a student of Socrates was a student of Plato, right? That that's, there's no accident that that happens. So, and, Correct. you know, and when you think about, right, for everybody in the audience, when you think about your friends that you spend time with, it's, it's more than just people you have over to your house or you go out with and, and barbecue with or go to the beach with, you know, it's in my Facebook stream, David, right? I will, there's people that you get on Facebook and, and every day it's like, oh, I hate my day. Or, you know, like that is just negativity that, that, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't build you up. doesn't build me up when I see that. I'm like, man, get off my feed. Yeah, exactly. I see things posted too about politics or what's right or wrong, or people starting rants and uh, getting into arguments over things on the Facebook. I mean, are you kidding me? That's absolutely insane. Nobody cares whether your football team is better than someone else's football (laughs) team. No one cares whether that guy would have won that game or not if he hadn't got injured. It's all irrelevant. What's relevant is for you to be the quarterback of your life. What's relevant is for you to be in the mastery of your own life. And to be in the mastery of your own life requires that you choose what you want and then step towards what you're choosing. And everything else other than that becomes a distraction. So, yeah, I'm amazed at what I see sometimes on the Facebook or, or in different feeds where people are, are complaining. I mean, complaining gets you nowhere. I right. say to people, bring, be a solution bringer, not a complaint bringer. If you're going to bring me a problem, bring me three solutions. Otherwise, keep your mouth closed. Don't talk. Yeah, right. I Shut. Yeah, right. <clears throat> um, I, could, I could go off on that. So, listen, go, you know, in terms of your Go Abundance tribe, we need to talk. I, I want in. I don't know how I get in, but, but I've seen what you guys <laughs> do, and it's Go Bun Dance. I love that stuff. So we'll, we'll talk later about that. But <clears throat> Sure. We'd love to have you, man. We welcome all guys that want to achieve amazing things in life and extreme physical fitness. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. I was never a workout warrior. I wasn't the best athlete in school. I was actually a little bit of a dork. You know, I liked sports, and I was never the last guy picked on the playground, but I was usually fourth or fifth or something like that. It wasn't like 
like, woohoo, we got David on our team. It was like, hey, babe, there's David. He's not bad. Let's pull him <laughs> along with us. But the guys in my tribe are massively, some of them are just amazing fitness guys. They're really, really fit. Uh, one of my good friends, Tim Rhodes, skis for 20 hours every week or climbs mountains or goes mountain biking. Uh, another one of my friends, Rock Thomas, is just an amazing, amazing physical fitness. And there's a lot of them. So all of a sudden, my well, my health has kicked up. I'm probably in the best shape of my life right now, especially relative to my age at 47. I weigh 150 pounds. I've dropped 15 pounds from where I was back when I was in, in a more corporate environment. And I'm surrounded by guys where exercise and working out is fundamental to their way of life. And that's what my tribe does for me. I bring a ton of business sense and business knowledge to the tribe. And other guys do as well, of course, but I'm, I'm around people where being unfit is just not an option. I mean, when we get together, uh, we're climbing mountains. We may mastermind for four hours, and then one of the guys will say, hey, let's go take a hike. And I'm thinking to myself, that's pretty alien to me. When I'm grinding it out, I like to keep grinding, but I'm like, I'll, I'll be open. I'll experience this, and we'll drop all our stuff, put on our hiking gear, go climb a mountain, come back two hours later, and get back right after it. So for me, the blessing of my tribe is it's put me in a better physical condition. Uh, so your tribe brings you so many different things. And Go Abundance is committed to that as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so earlier, David, you said that you know you need to be. You, you talked about mastery. You said you need to be the master of your own life. <clears throat> now, here's a, I want to unpack a parallel here, right? So you have what you've gone out. You started fifty companies, right? And you have an amazing track record because you know you start companies and some fail. <clears throat> now you have a a fifty. Uh, what it looks like is you know twenty five are working and twenty five have failed. That's great. I mean one out of two is awesome because <clears throat> most people fail seven times. What stops people from going out and and taking control of their life is fear, man. You know when they people think about going and starting a company, they don't do it because they are scared. <clears throat> now here's the parallel. I I would love to 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 see if uh, you know we can play, tease out here. Hitchhiking around the world is a that is. I mean, I, I, it's, that's crazy, right? I mean, what a great adventure. You conquered fear at an early age. Is, is this ability to conquer fear, right? This, this going out and hitchhiking through Uganda and flipping a coin, whether you're going to go to Nepal or, you know, it, it, did that set some kind of precedence for your entrepreneurial, like, jumping off point? Sure, sure, sure. That's a great question. Look, there's no question that in hindsight, when I look back on it to that little you know, kid, like I'm 47 now, I can't even remember really that much what I was like at 22. I can be sure that I wouldn't want that 20 year old running my life today because I've come a long way since then. And, and the other thing I'd say about it is this, like, I, I want to be very clear. There's nothing amazingly unique about the entrepreneurs and the guys I hang out with. They're just people that want more out of life. They're people that have chosen more. That's it. I, as I said, I'm a, I was a pretty dorky kid. I was an average athlete. When I was hitchhiking around the world, I had a blast. But it would make a better story than I'd actually lived. And what I mean by that is I was just hitchhiking around and cruising, and you know, I, I would get lost. I'd lose my luggage. I remember popping open a journal I had from the middle of my trip one day, and I, I read it, and it said, man, I just wish I was back in America, and I had a regular job and could take a shower every day and sleep in the same bed. Yeah. So – it was cool, and I did it. And one of the main reasons I did it is because a great friend of mine, his family tradition was to go around the world. He'd been pestering me for about a year to do it. So I don't want to imply there's something special or unique or different about me. What I want to say is uh, the thing I choose to do is say yes to what comes along that seems to make sense. So I said yes to going around the world because my good friend was going to do it anyway. And I had a job that I loved for a while, but towards the end I wasn't loving it. And I was, I was just like, okay, why not? What, why not? And you said it just a little while ago. It's about taking action. The number one thing that holds you back in life is not taking action. And so how do you take action? Well, you have to have a vision for yourself and a set of goals and plans that are so compelling that action is inevitable. And here's how you do that. First, you've got to write down what your viewpoint is and what your vision is and where you want your life to be. And number two is you've got to break that down into concrete action steps how you want to move forward. What's going to be my goals for this year? Okay, let's say I wanted to sell more real estate or I wanted to build my chiropractic practice to a higher level or I wanted to do more deals. Well, what's the number one thing you got to do? You got to go get clients, okay? So how do you get clients? Well, you get face-to-face -face with people. You start promoting your, pro your products. And if that clear vision of having a huge chiropractor or having a great real estate practice or owning a bunch of investment properties is clearly delineated in your vision for your life, and then you brought that vision down to daily uh, annual goals and daily action steps. All you have to do at that point is take action. 
And I'm telling you, it can be the worst, goofiest action on the planet. So people sometimes see successful people. I think I'm moderately successful. I think Richard Branson is amazingly successful. And they think, man, they must have something that no one else has. But the truth is that's not so. The truth is they took action, and it was goofy and dorky at first, but they kept taking action. And over time, they got better. And because they were willing to constantly learn, get better, and take more action, suddenly you look at them like, like that guy's a master. He must have just woken up out of bed someday, fallen on the floor, and been an amazing entrepreneur. But the truth is the opposite. The truth is they just kept making mistakes kept failing, and then eventually got better at stuff they did. I remember my early prospecting calls, my early listing presentations, and now I'm a broker owner as well. I remember my early uh, recruiting appointments I did. And, and, and as I look at them now, I cringe. They were so lame. But you know what? Those are the stepping stones that got me to where I am today. And today I think I'm pretty good at all of those things, but I still have a ton to learn. So the reality is, is action is the missing thing. And here's one other thing for people. Stop thinking so much, man. Everybody overthinks things. You know, what's the purpose of the brain? Uh, Sharma says the brain is a wonderful servant and a terrible master. And here's how you can get the brain to serve you. You get the brain to serve you by saying, how can I get more deals? How can I prospect more? How can I learn to be a better prospector? How can I learn to do better presentations? If you ask the brain questions, you'll get great answers, and that'll make you better. Here's how to make the brain your, your master and, and therefore make yourself miserable. Listen to it all the time. Because if you're listening to your head all the time, it's always going to find reasons for you not to do stuff. Because ultimately, fundamentally, the brain keeps the human body and the being safe. Right. So if you say to yourself, hey, should I take a bike ride today? Um, the brain will say, no, you might fall off the bike. That's a terrible idea. You could get hurt. What if you don't have a helmet? You don't have the helmet today. It's much safer just to sit here, lay on the couch, and watch TV. And ultimately, if you keep listening to your head, it'll talk so much. It'll talk you out of almost anything amazing in life. So my point is use the brain as a servant. Ask where you want to go. Choose from your heart and your passion what direction you want to take your life, and then take that action without thinking too much. If you do the worst presentation in the world 150 times, I guarantee you by the time you get to the 150th one, You'll be at least twice as good as you were when you started and most likely 10, 15, 20 times better. And that's the key to success in life is choosing what you want and then taking action no matter how bumbly, fumbly, and goofy you start off with that action. Absolutely, man. Yeah, imperfect action. Action, just take action for action's sake, sake right? Stop planning to plan. Action. You know, and, yeah. you know, and it's really imperfect action is fine just as long as you do it. I, I, I love that, man. I love that. Why is it? I mean, is there... Why is it, though, that that uh, that people don't take that action? Right. So, I mean, you know, I, I have some of my coaching clients <clears throat> and some people will say, hey, this is, you know, let's 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 go through, you know, here's your vision. Here's your goals. Here's, you know, how many touches. Here's how we're going to do it. And I have some people that do it. And I have other people that that I'm like, dude, get up, take a shower and get out your front door and then get in your car yeah. door. You know, I don't know why people don't take action, but I imagine it has to do with a fear of failure and a fear of looking bad. Humans love to look good, and we love to be right. Um, those are two of the most compelling uh, desires for a human being. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the way you get over that is a couple of things. Number one is look for role models. I'm, again, lucky. I keep mentioning how lucky I am. I've got my, my – Gary Keller has been a mentor for me for 35 years. He's built one of the largest uh, – the largest real estate company in the U.S. by agent count and one of the largest businesses in America – and I've been around him a long time. One of my first mentors was Mark Willis, uh, who now is the CEO of that same company. I already mentioned my mom. My peers, my friends, are people like uh, Pat Hyben and uh, Patrick Lilly, as you mentioned, guys that make things happen. So here's what you got to do. There's people around you that are making things happen. Ask them if you can have coffee with them. Almost all of them will say yes. Now, they may not give you coffee every day for a month or a year, but if you say, can I have coffee with you and pick your brain, they'll say yes. I guarantee you 80% of people say yes. So you go have that coffee. You bring your questions. How could I be yes. better? What's, you, you absorb it from them. And it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. If you establish a great peer group around yourself of people that makes things happen, guess what kind of energy you start picking up? Man, I'm telling you, if you'll just hang out with amazing people that are making things happen, you'll start making things happen. Either that or you'll just fade out, and you'll only fade out if you choose to. And the fade out is because you quit. And as long as you never quit, you keep getting up, and you keep moving forward, ultimately you will start succeeding. And then as you get around these people, it becomes second nature. One of the things I love to talk about is with Richard Branson. You mentioned him earlier. Does anyone on this call think that if they had a project they needed doing, say a, a children's shelter or a 
a new business they wanted to create or some building they wanted to build, that Richard Branson would be a bad partner for that. We all know he'd be an awesome partner. Let's yeah. say Richard said, okay, I'm in on that children's shelter. Do you think it would happen? 100%. Almost certain. Yeah. 100%, right? Yeah, let me tell you a little secret about Richard that you may not know. Richard Branson only works in the mornings. He only works in the mornings. He doesn't work in the afternoons, right? So how cool is that? Uh, one of my bucket list items is to hang out with Richard Branson on Necker Island for a week, right? And why do I want to do that? Because when you get around people that are making amazing things happen, you start seeing a new way of viewing life that is much more effective than the way you're currently viewing life. That guy runs an amazing number of companies, but he only works every morning. He takes af every afternoon off. How can you be more like that? If, you're, uh, if you have call reluctance, hang out with guys that love making calls, and there's so many great agents on, on this planet. You just need to start hanging out with those guys and absorbing their energy. Then you'll learn how to make your calls. And it's all stepping stones. And whatever got you to where you are won't get you to where you want to go. Yes. We put this in the book. The book's called Wealth Can't Wait. Yeah. You know, here's how life works. You go to high school. Your mom and dad want you to get a job. They're like, go be a good student, get a good job. So you're studying the whole time. People are telling you stuff constantly. And then you're supposed to quick take a career at 20. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Right? You're supposed to pick a major or get a college degree or something. So, I don't know, I'll be a doctor, I'll be an engineer, or I'll be a, a sales guy or whatever it is. Then you go to college. You get trained all the way through that. And then all of a sudden you have a job. Maybe you're a dentist. Now you're five years into this. Do you love it? Because if you don't, what a lot of people do is they don't love it. But you know what? They think I'm stuck. I'm making all this money. It's a good, safe place to be. I'm paying off my student loans. And they get stuck and they stay there. And, and from my point of view, we have to know ourselves. And every now and then we have to step out of our lives and look at it from a distance, almost like in a coffee shop or on top of a mountain and say, okay, let me look at everything. Do I love this? Is my relationship a 10 out of 10? Is my physical fitness need where it needs to be? Is my career something I love and I'm passionate about? Are my friends the right kind of friends? And is everything in my life going the way I want it to? And do I have a clear vision? And when they get no's, they got to say to myself, okay, what can I do to make my relationship a 10 out of 10? What could I do to make my physical fitness improve? And you'll get answers. And then you write them in your book, and that becomes your life vision. And if you hate your job, crying out loud, quit. Yeah. Go do something different. If there's nothing you like about your job, there's nothing honorable in sucking it up and, and, and suffering for the next 40 years. In America, you don't starve, and you don't, generally speaking, not have shelter. So what is there that you're afraid of? You know, you've got to choose what you want and move towards it. And if you'll just start moving towards what you want – the world will kind of open up to you and strange forces will come to your aid. See, I, and I, look, again, I agree with you. Uh, and I got to stop saying that, I, but I do. I agree with everything you're saying. You know, and if, if people hate what they do, I mean, that is a fast track to getting old and fat, right? Um, yeah. Look, it, throughout this whole call, David, you've exhibited this, this, this mindset, that, you know, an abundance mindset. You know, you have this wonderful mindset, but, but... <clears throat> For everybody out there, right, real estate is this business of no's, right? We have these days or weeks that we just feel like we get kicked in the gut. We can't do it again. We don't want to get up and, and go through that again. <clears throat> Has that ever happened to you? You know, have you ever – it's been so hard that you wanted to quit. And how did oh, you – Oh, man, are you kidding me? Right. How did you push yeah. through that? You know, talk to us because <clears throat> there's a lot of people out there that are, that are feeling like that, right? They're not putting any numbers on the board sure. this month. They, they had, a, you know, a, a, an A last month what can you tell them to, you know, how can they push through that roadblock and find success? Sure. You know, it's a great question. And for sure, I've, I've had days like that. In fact, sometimes people come up to me and say, I'd like your life. And I'd say, yeah, you might want my life, but you may not like to go through what I had to go through to get my life. Um, at one point in my career, I literally felt like I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I think I was 30 years old. I had achieved a high level of success. I'd opened a brokerage in Dallas. Uh, I'd taken on another brokerage in Dallas. And, and I had this mindset that I had to do everything. And I was, I was doing everything from building cubicles to hiring managers to recruiting agents 
uh, to, to trying to do some accounting, which was way over my head. I was doing all this stuff, and, and my theory at that point of life was that I should do everything. And, and, uh, and it was tough, man, and it was really tough. And the way you get through things like that is you have great mentors and great coaches because people have lived before. People have gone through what we are going through before. And the amazing thing about people is how much they actually would love to help you. People love to help people that are on purpose and moving in a positive direction with their lives. Um, so if you are struggling and you're having tough times, the first thing you need to do is get a coach, get a mentor, get, a, get a, someone who can reach down and help you. And cry, uh, go ask for that help. If you're, if you're in a tough spot, go look for that help. And that's not always easy because sometimes you're kind of in this hole and you think the whole world's out to get you and everywhere you look, it just looks bad. And it's hard to just take that initiative and step up and reach out and ask for someone to help you. Um, and then the second thing is to find a, a peer group. You know, if you're not masterminding with a peer group or a men's group or a woman's group or a, 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 just a mastermind of a co-ed group, at least once a month, you're missing out. You need to be with people that are in the same situation you are because as soon as you find other people that are in the same situation, you realize, hey, it ain't that bad. It's not that bad. I, I may be struggling. I may not be getting any numbers on the board, but neither is this guy. And he seems like he's really, really bright. And so, and then you go ask a mentor, well, how did you do it? And they'll tell you the same thing, man. Just keep getting up and getting after it. Yeah. The number one key to success is just keep getting up and trying and trying and trying. And, and it's almost like the universe, life, God, whatever you want to call it, rewards you if you just never quit and you keep getting up, you keep going. And, you know, go to a class. There are some great classes out there. People are teaching amazing things all the time. Go get a real estate class. Go to a bowl class. Go to some you know, something that will inspire you and move you forward. Because we have to get out of our own way to be massively successful. You have to stop thinking, stop judging, stop limiting yourself, get out of your own way, clear all that space, and then choose something you're passionate and purposeful about, and then just keep moving yourself in that direction. And if you go to the bed at the end of the day beat down and, and depressed and, and hammered, get a good night's sleep, get up in the morning, go for a walk, go for a run, get some exercise, Pull out your vision, read that vision, get inspired by where you're trying to go, and then just get after it again. And as long as the calling is a place that you're supposed to be and a place that you love, you'll succeed. And as I said, you know, what is failure? Failure is really just an opportunity to learn uh, and make us stronger at what we do. So there is really no failure. At the end of the day, no one, um, no one gets to the top without a certain amount of tribulations. And uh, so you just write through those. I've got one other piece on this for you I want to add. Yeah. It's really easy. No matter how hard it is, it's easy. And this is something that I've loved. It's a new learning I've had a couple of years ago, but I just love it. We, we make things hard by calling them hard. They really aren't. You know what's hard is a, is a, is a, a, a Vietnam vet, I mean, I'm sorry, an Afghanistan veteran that gets his legs blown off and has to learn to walk again. That's hard. You know, it's, what's possibly hard is having a kid born with some disease that you can't cure. That's tough. You yeah. know, what was tough for me was watching my old man die of cancer for three years and waste away in front of my eyes. That was pretty tough. What I face every day is easy. I might get slapped with a, a lawsuit that's frivolous that I have to deal with, or I might have lose, lose 100 grand on a business deal. You know what? Man, it's easy compared to what, what can be hard. And if you keep telling yourself how easy it is, you'll start seeing evidence that it's easy. And so or really the number one component of success is your, your mind and your mindset and getting out of your own way. And if you just put a little bit of time in that, it'll start making a huge difference. I love it. Well, and you know, I'll tell you something. So what, here's one thing. I, let me, I, uh, I want to know if you've seen this. So a lot of people think that it should be hard, right? You're saying it's easy. And sometimes, you know, people think it should be hard. And when they start finding success and they get into that flow, right, they get, they're in the right spot for them and they start to find success and, and, and it comes easy, like they think something's wrong, right? And they start to, I've seen people, it's happened to myself, where I've started to sabotage my own success because I felt like, man, it should be harder than this. You know, that's a great point, Toby. And people need to, you know, you got to look at your beliefs. Right. I was talking to a guy the other day. He wanted to, he's a business guy. He's asked me to mentor him. Right. So I shared with him an opportunity. You know what he first said? Oh, I don't need that guy. That guy can't help me. And I'm thinking that's weird. We're kind of playing golf. I get nine holes further on. And I shared another business idea. He goes, Oh no, I couldn't do that. It would never work. And what I realized was this guy that wants coaching actually doesn't want coaching. He has a viewpoint that nothing's going to work and everyone's out to get him and he doesn't need anybody. And yet he's kind of asking me for coaching. And at the end of the round, I said, you know, man, I can't coach you through 
things if you don't want to be coached. The reality is you would rather think it was hard, and guess what? Evidence will show up that it's hard. You would rather think that uh, you have to have money to do something. If you think you have to have money to do a deal that makes money, guess what's going to happen? You're never going to find a deal until you have money, and if you don't have any money, that's going to be never. Right. Our beliefs determine our reality. All the new science in, uh, in brains, and it, it says that the brain is neuroplastic. And what that means is the, what wires together fires together. And what that means is the more you look at things a certain way, in other words, uh, it's really hard for me, then all the evidence that you see around you is how hard it is. If, in fact, you, you change that mindset and start saying, hey, this is easy, and I've got plenty of room for more growth and more excitement and more success in my life, guess what starts showing up? If you, if you ask most successful people, you know, what is success? Is it luck? Is it a great idea? Is it mindset? Almost all of them will say it's about 99% mindset or 90% mindset. How you think, how you view life, and how you move forward creates all your luck, your business opportunities, and everything else. Yeah. So keep looking at your mindset. Listen to your language. Do what I said. Reflect. Step back from yourself. Know yourself and say, okay, is what I'm saying working? Because a lot of it, we didn't even pick up ourselves. It was put into us. Maybe you had a grandpa, and he grew up in the Depression, and he constantly told you, you got to save money, you can't take risks, you got to have a safe job. Whatever it is, somebody put that in your head, and then you walk around thinking that's your idea. But as long as you allow yourself to have those limiting beliefs usually given to us by other people, your life's going to be limited. And it's a constant journey of looking at it and setting it aside, because life is actually pretty easy. I mean, I don't know about you, Toby, but... No one's taken a shot at me in the last month or even in my entire <laughs> life. No one's tried yeah. to beat me up recently, not since high school. Um, I haven't really, you know, there's nothing really that bad going on around me. No one stole my house. No, the house hasn't burned down. Most days that stuff just doesn't happen. So it's actually pretty easy. Only you, all you got to do is get up and make your calls, get up and follow your business plan, get up and choose your life. Yeah. And things get a lot easier. It's only hard because people choose to make it hard. Yeah. I look, uh, <clears throat> I, <laughs> I agree. But so, you know, look, the other thing, too, I, that I would add on that, <clears throat> David, is that and you mentioned it briefly earlier is y you have to be open to opportunities. You have to say yes. And the more that you say yes and the more that you, you, you know, that you keep your eyes open, right? You're, you're out there taking action imperfect uh, as it is <clears throat> when you're open to additional opportunities outside of your industry or whatever it is, that's when, you know, that's when for me, that's when deals that that I wouldn't have normally gotten have come to me. Yeah. Just saying yes. That's a great point, man. Mm -hmm. Saying yes is huge. I mean, I, I think a lot of times, like, you know, we'll go back to God, the universe, whatever your belief system is, puts incredible opportunities around us all the time. We just say no to them. Right. And, uh, and again, it's a developed philosophy over time. You, you're hearing 20 years of development. But for instance, I flew back from Scotland two nights ago, right? I got in at 8 p.m. I'm all jet lagged. I'm hanging out with my buddy. He wants to play pool. I mean, ping pong until one o'clock in the morning. So we play ping pong until one o'clock in the morning. The next morning, he wants to get up and go to hot yoga. Now, the last thing I wanted to do after five hours sleep for about four nights in a row was go do hot yoga. But you know what? I said yes. And why did I say yes? Uh, because he's my friend. He's my peer. He's my buddy. And I went with him. We did hot yoga. And you know what? I came out of it. And today, I feel like a million bucks. I'm so glad I did it yesterday. And I could have been a thing where I said, now I'm just going to nap a little longer. I haven't slept in a long time. I'm going to stay in bed. Yeah. And it's the same and true in so many different areas. Last night, I coached a men's group here. There's six guys that get together. They've been masterminding for five years. And they all want to do real estate, and so few, you know, uh, most of them haven't. And I was, I was asking them questions, and I could hear in their language that they were limiting themselves. The one guy said, well, no one brings me deals. And I'm like, no one's ever going to bring you deals. Yeah. Nobody just shows up on your door and knocks on your door and says, here's a deal. No, one, no client says, hey, I want to buy a house. Uh, I happen to look you up in the phone book, and I noticed you were a realtor. I'd like you to list my house. You know, that's not how it works. If you walk around the mindset of nobody brings me deals, guess what's going to happen in your life? No one's ever going to bring you a deal. But if instead you shift your mindset and say, there are a million people out there that want to buy and sell homes right now. Uh, I'm going to go look for them. I'm going to find them. I'm going to attract them to myself. And in the same way, if you want to do deals, if you want to, this guy was a doctor, so he wants to buy real estate and invest in it. You got to make a commitment to look at deals for an hour every week. You got to look at a certain number of deals. And if you don't know where to find them, go build a team to find them. There's so many things you can do. And yet most of us kind of create this language that keeps us exactly where we are. Uh, you know, your life needs to be as passionate for you as, as, as fantasy football. You know, a friend of mine's into fantasy football, and I enjoy watching it. And I watch him do this fantasy football thing, and I'm like, 
he has to watch all the games, check and study all the stats of all the players, and then uh, you know put a team together and then play that team against another team. I think that's the general idea of it. As I'm watching it, to me, I'm like, that looks like a lot of work. Yeah. That looks really hard. I love American football, and it looks fun, but it also looks like a lot of work. Why don't people take that same energy and that same passion and put it into a vision for their life? What instead of winning a fantasy football league, your goal was to have a magnificent life, and you took a minute to write down a paragraph what that would look like. And then you said, okay, one of the things to have a magnificent life is that I have an awesome relationship with my beloved. Okay, so what am I going to do to support that this year? Well, I'll read one book on relationship, maybe the five love languages or his needs, her needs, or something like that. What do I need also to have a magnificent life? I need fitness. So what's one thing I can do for fitness? Like right now I'm doing nothing. I'm overweight. What's one thing I can do? Well, I know. I'll commit to walk 30 minutes three times a week. Boom, done. What's another area you can add? Wealth, doing deals, looking at deals. All these things, if you'll just start creating that passion, that plan for your life, just like the energy people put into fantasy football or bowling leagues or different mindless entertainments and amusements, you'll start opening the doors to more for you. And the thing is, it's, it's fine to have mindless en- entertainment. I'm not knocking that at all, as long as it's a side aspect, not your entire life. For crying out loud, have a beautiful vision, mission, and focus for your life. Move your life in that direction. And then every now and then play solitaire on your computer. But don't make solitaire your destination. And yeah. so many people, because they don't have that plan and that vision and that mission, they, their their destination becomes solitaire or fantasy football, and that's uh, that breaks my heart, honestly, Toby. That's <laughs> that's for me. The, that just breaks my heart. Wow. Uh, yeah, it doesn't break my heart, but I, you know, I, I, I yeah, I see it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're going to talk about one more topic before we jump off here. I know that that uh, you know one of your deals and and Pat Pat Hybens as well. You guys are building out you know these all these horizontal income streams, which I think is brilliant. I th- wish I kept turning my money right. I take my money, throw it into a deal, right? Get whatever you know my principal plus back. I never. I do own a couple rental houses. <clears throat> uh, I have three that that are out there, but that's not going to sustain me. You have like forty, and my here's my question is. With all the stuff, you know, you've you've gone out, you've hired fifteen hundred agents, right? You you have all the stuff that you're doing. How do you not get overwhelmed? How do you stay productive and focused with all those different things, all those different buckets you have to manage? How do you do that on a day to day basis? <laughs> you know, it's hard. Is is a mom with five kids? Yeah, what I do. It's easy, right? You know, uh, here's a couple things, and you brought up something near and dear to my heart, and and that is this. Um, uh, real estate agents are, in my opinion, in in the greatest industry ever made. I, I believe there's more millionaires been made in real estate than any other field in the history of time. And I might be wrong, but that's what I believe. I believe that um, as well. It's certainly one of the tops. So we could all agree it's one of the tops. So, yep. so, so they're in real estate, right? The income opportunities are huge. If you just learn to be a fiduciary and take care of the client and keep learning and growing and learn how to prospect and take care of that, relationship, you're going to make money. And here's what breaks my heart again. Uh, I'm pretty passionate about this. If you're in that industry, why would you just be a salesperson? For crying out loud, if you're in the industry, invest in the industry. I see so many guys making so much money and they don't invest in a passive income opportunity or a passive income stream or in a field they're actually an expert in. They're an expert in their communities. They know good deals when they see them. Why aren't they out there buying real estate? And so one of the things I coach agents to do as often as I can, look at deals every week for one hour and buy real estate, buy it and turn it into rentals. Flipping's great, by the way, Toby, and your rate of return on flipping uh, is going to be much higher than your rate of return on buying and holding. Yeah. But the thing about flipping is you keep having to flip. Yep. And I've bought and sold close to 700 homes in my career. I've got every address up. and I can't wait till I cross the thousand threshold. Uh, that's from my own account. And we flipped by far and away the majority of them. Uh, but I've kept 100 rentals right now. And you know what? Uh, I could sell them now and make more money. But by keeping them, I have built an asset that feeds me and creates cash flow for me, whether I, I get out of bed or not. I was reading a stat just recently that 50% of Australians' net worth is in their house. Uh, the same mastermind I was at last night, I asked a guy, I said, so of your net worth, what percentage is in your house? He lives in Santa Monica, so it was a lot, like 60%, 70%. And I said to him, so why don't you have two? Right. Why don't you have two houses? How long have you been a doctor and you have one house? Why don't you move, buy another one, and turn the old one into a rental? And when I talk to realtors, I'm like, you're in the best industry in the world for a person that's motivated and ambitious and wants to learn and wants to grow. 
And now, and then you're also in the best industry of the world to create passive income opportunities. So why don't you buy real estate? And I was so pleased because I felt like 2011 was pretty near the bottom as did a lot of people. So I, I coached my agents in one of my offices and there's like 120 agents in the room. I said, go buy real estate now. And then the next year in 2012 in January, I came back and I did it again. And I said, who bought real estate? And about three or four hands went up. And I was like, that's awesome. And then uh, I said the same class. I said, you still need to be buying. This is probably going to be one of the best times in your lifetime to buy real estate. Rates are low. There's a lot of built up demand. And, and, and then I went away. And I came back in January of 13. I asked the same question. About eight people had raised their hands and said, I bought real estate. And then at the beginning of 2014, I went back and I taught that same group of 120 agents or so. And I said the same question. I said, okay, now I don't believe is the time to buy real estate as aggressively. Now I think you've got to pay attention. It's kind of normalizing, so you've got to use your wits. Whereas before you could buy anything, how many of you bought real estate? And, and about 15 hands went up. And I was so proud and happy that, that, that just, if just one guy gets it, you're in this industry for crying out loud, go buy real estate. And yeah, like you said, flipping is cool and it's great, but it's still a job. If you'll just own one, two, three, four, five, six rental properties, and you'll pay them off, put them on 15-year notes, you can be financially free. And if you're in the industry and you believe in it and you're telling clients every day they should buy homes and sell homes and move, why aren't you investing in the same space? And so, yes, I'm passionate about that, and Pat and I compete in that area. And part of GoBundance and part of our book, Wealth Can't Wait, talks about the importance of having that financial plan and just looking at it every day and say, am I moving myself in the direction of financial freedom? And financial freedom is defined as enough money coming in from the assets you own to meet your budget. If you spend 10000 a month and you bring in 10000 and a dollar a month, you are financially free. You can still work if you want to, but if you chose not to, you could walk away. And the winners that I see in the financial game out there are guys that did this. And I know guys that are retired that had 10, 15, 20 homes maybe flipped it into an auto zone or a, 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 a McDonald's you know, building or what have you, or land or a multifamily apartment, and they just live off the passive income. And that's the goal you have. That's the models you have in front of you. And then I see other guys making four, five, six, seven hundred thousand 700000 a year, and they do it for 10 years, and then a downturn comes, they get smashed, yeah. and you see them, and they got nothing. Right. And they're almost like Marlon Brandt in that famous movie, like, I could have been somebody. I could have right. been a contender. Right. Yeah. And all you got to do is take that one hour a week to analyze deals and make a commitment. Add, add one property every three years. Add one property every other year. If you'll add one property, so two every three years, and put them on 15-year notes, in 20, 25 years, you'll be so much further ahead than you would be if you didn't. And uh, the evidence is manifest for that. Yeah, I love it, man. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, you know. I even have one property that I don't, I have a cabin, well, it's a house in the mountains and I don't rent that out. And I, I, you know, I have assets that I'm not monetizing. Right. And I, and I should be, and, and for everybody out there, right. Even if you can't buy property, there are different ways to, to monetize what you currently have. Right. I mean, there's lots of people when, with Airbnb, right. You know, I heard a story about a guy who wanted to start a bed and breakfast, uh, but it, to get his feet wet, he just started renting out a room in his house. And then he rented out another room. And then all of a sudden, uh, they bought another house and started renting out rooms. And now this guy's got like five different houses, and, and he just fills them up through Airbnb. So, you know, there's lots of ways to, to monetize the stuff. That there's you have. so many ways, yeah. Toby. And, and the key is, as we talked about, and you brought up so, so much earlier, which is really the key, is just taking action. The same guy at the mastermind, I mean, he said, I, I know one brings me deals and I don't have the knowledge. And he's probably been saying this for three years. I'm like, well, by, in three years, you could have read eight books on how to invest in real estate, looked at 50 deals a year. By now, you'd have looked at a, uh, you put 50 hours, I mean, a year into looking at deals. Right now, you had 150 hours of looking at deals and you'd have read eight books and you'd have the knowledge and you'd be finding the deals. Yep. But instead, people sit around going, hey, I can't find the deals. I can't find a way. That guy is a perfect example, your friend. He, he did it once. It went well, and then he did more of it. You know, I bought a single family in 1995 for 77000 It was my primary residence. I put twenty grand down. I lived in it for two years, turned it into a rental. In 2001, I refied it out and took out sixty grand, and I bought three more rentals for eighty grand a piece in Lubbock, Texas, nowhere near where I live. Today, I have those uh, four properties. They're, uh, they were on 15-year notes from 01. In two years, they'll be paid for. They'll have a net equity value of a half a million. Their gross rental income is four thousand. Their net rental income is twenty eight hundred a month. So on that original twenty thousand investment, I have a half a million in equity, and and in a couple of years I'll have twenty eight hundred uh, a month coming in, which is thirty you know thirty something thousand dollars a year on a twenty thousand investment. Just for grins, I went ahead and brought that forward with a guy that's much smarter than me today to determine the total rate of return. 
on that $20,000, not counting any free rent from cash flow, which they have had positive cash flow, but not counting any of that, just purely on that assessment, the 20, the 20 to 500, it was a 17% annual rate of return. You know, on a 17% annual rate of return, you put up 100000 in that, and you are loaded in 10, 15 years. So it may not always be that high. The key is to just get started. If you'll just get started, take action, good luck will start happening to you. And you know where people get burned, and this is an excuse people use a lot. They're like, I won't do it. I heard Joe got burned or right. Mary got burned or something. Is because you get burned when you get greedy. Yep. The guy goes to Vegas and buys eight condos uh, sight unseen and puts down a deposit on them. Guess what's going to happen with zero money down? The market is red hot. You know, it's pretty hot right now, so you've got to pay more attention. It's not super hot, but it's definitely hotter. you just got to pay attention. You know, don't get greedy. Just be aware. Make one good investment every year, one good investment every other year, and in, in, in five, ten years, uh, it'll take care of itself. People underestimate what they can do in five years and overestimate what they can do in one year. And I think that's what holds people back. They think, oh, I, gotta, if I want to be a millionaire. I need to do it in like 12 months. That's not how it works. Start taking action now. You'll be amazed where you are in 10 or 15 years. I love it, man. And that's the quote. That's a quote for the show. Um, underestimate and, and overestimate. Okay, let, let's, we're way over, so let's wrap this up. Um, <clears throat> I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, other than wealth can't wait. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. February of Hold on, we'll talk about that in a second. But what what other books should I go by? Uh, you know, I, I the greatest book of all time is Think and Grow Rich. Oh. You know? and and that's that's the greatest my in my opinion, you know, self mastery book ever written. The greatest tape series is Jim Rohn. I mean, if you go, you can get go get Jim Rohn's Life Mastery for like forty five bucks online. It's you're stealing. It's probably better than what you could get from Harvard at five hundred thousand dollars for a four year degree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the one I read recently that I loved was the one thing by Gary Keller. It mm -hmm. just breaks it down to the very simple component of, of one thing. Focus on the one thing you could do right now such that if you did it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary. Um but there's so many great ones, man. I mean, you stand on the shoulders of giants when you make the commitment to a learning based life. Uh there's so much great wisdom out there. Um, you, people can find me on the Facebook at David Osborne in Austin, Texas at Keller Williams, or they could, uh, uh, shoot me an email through the wealth can't wait website and I'll give you a whole book list. I, I try to read 35, 40 books a year and, uh, uh, there's just so much great stuff out there, man. That is cool. That is cool. So, um, yeah, and look, if anybody wants a free copy of Napoleon Hill or something from Jim Rohn, you can just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and, uh, you'll get a free book. Um, okay, David. Uh, so for everybody out there, here's what Dave and I talked about. So he's got this book, with, and I, I got to tell you, if, if, if your book is like this interview, um, amazing, amazing. You are going to sell a million copies. It's, just, it's such an amazing – look, you are definitely top – Top five. I can I can think of two others that I probably liked better than yours. But you know, out of the you know eighty or so interviews I've done, you are top top three. All right. So thank here's you. thank you. Here's what David's gonna do. So uh, go to wealthcantwait.com. He's got his book coming out. It's coming out November 2015. And here's what David is committed to. If you buy three copies, you buy three copies. Send the receipt to me. I'll forward them to, to David, or you can send them to David. Um, he, you're going to get on a list. And what is going to happen is he is going to do a giant mastermind on Spreecast uh, for everybody. Everybody's going to be able to get on a call with David. You can ask him about entrepreneurship. You can ask him questions about the book. You can ask him how to make your life better. So uh, go to wealthcantwait.com. Buy three books, you know, give one to your team, give one to your wife, give one to your friend um, and uh, and jump on a call with David. I mean, it is uh, uh, I might do it just to just to get on a call with you again, David. So, hey, as we're signing off, let everybody know where they can find you. I know there's wealth. Can't wait. Where else can they find you? How can they send you an email and reach out and say thank you for coming on this show? Sure. Go ahead and email me. You can reach me at David at David Osborne dot com. David at David Osborne dot com. O-S-B-O-R-N. And I just uh, encourage everyone to go live an amazing life. Uh, you know, the, the, the cool thing about life is the more abundance and more amazing your life is, the more amazing my life is. We're, we're a positive feedback loop out here. And the more amazing things each one of us gets up to, the more it sort of empowers every other one of us to have a great life. So go out there, set your plan, set your vision, and make things happen. Toby, it's been an honor to talk with you today. What fun. You're a great interviewer. 
And I would say it's just been a blast talking to you. Thanks, buddy. Well, listen, we might, you know, I'd love to have you back on because one thing you mentioned earlier, I don't want, don't, because we're already over, so don't start talking about it. But you talked about you trying to go out and find edges. I think that would be a fascinating topic to dig into, but we'll save that for next time. Hey, David. You keep, got it. Keep, yes. keep, go get them. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Toby. See you, buddy. All right, man. It's been a blast. Later. Let's go.